If a Fed finds out, I can calm this storm. If you look back on what I've done already, I can do whatever you need me to do now. You got to look back on where you come from. Today on the Daily Gospel Network. So I ask you, what is it in your life that God has done for you before that the next time you get in trouble, you'll look back in your boat, look back over your life and see that he done it once, he'll do it again. Welcome, I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network, where we bring you inspiring church services and sermons from pastors, churches, and choirs from all over the country. And today is no different. Get ready to be blessed and inspired by Pastor Cross Richard Sr. of New Creation Christian Center in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. What a blessing. This Lois is so anointed. I just get joy out of hearing what the Lord is, how the Lord would use her on Sunday morning. She never, she never decides what he's going to say until minutes before she get up, a second, and then the Lord speaks to her. Instant. That's a blessing. This morning, we're going to talk about you're not the only one. Have you ever thought you were the only one? Amen. That the blessings were passing? Only one sad? Only one lonely? Only one with trouble in your home? Only one couldn't get the right job? God said, you're not the only one this morning. Now, I need to make some disclaimer here this morning. I am not a Christian counselor. Nor am I any kind of professional counselor. I am a pastor with insight into the working of the loss of the will to function. Anybody ever lost your will to function? Come on, let's be real today. Amen. Amen. We're going to be real. Let God help you today. Be real. You ever lost your will to function? I do not proclaim that you do not need to see a professional Christian counselor or a doctor that specializes in depression or any system. I just want to tell you that God loves you and that we love you and together you can become whole again by trusting in God and his word and that you are not the only one dealing with whatever issue you're dealing with it's amazing how we sit next to individuals and they look so happy and smiling so good and you have no idea they are dealing with just what you're dealing with going through what you're going the Lord pressed upon my spirit to preach this message about a month ago. It's going to be a series. Now, how I'm not a Christian counselor, a professional counselor, I'm going to teach this where well, God gives you insight. And so you're not dealing, you're not only the only one dealing with depression. You're not the only one who do not know what to call what you're dealing with. There are other individuals that got something going on in their life and they don't even know what to call it. And I'm not diagnosing what is going on in your life. I'm just following God's direction. Depression is a feeling of guilt, worthlessness, and hopelessness, lack of self-confidence. Anybody ever found themselves there? Anxiety interferes with the peace of mind. When you are sad and when you cry for long periods of time and without understanding why, there's a difference between dealing with sorrow because of something that happened. Oftentimes there's nothing wrong. But my action and my feeling says that there is something desperately going on in my life that I can't put my hand on. I don't know what it is. Hallelujah. But there's something. 
And oftentimes, I'm sad. I'm not talking about me. Unable to function. How about not willing to function? And I don't know why. You can say it, man. God didn't give me this message because he just wanted me to preach it. Your hopes and happiness are often cloudy with feelings of hopelessness and unable to know why you feel so depressed. And often you don't even know that it's depression or any form of depression that you're dealing with. You don't even know what's going on. You just know something is happening and it's not right. Sometimes it lasts for one hour. Sometimes it lasts for days. Nobody saying amen. But there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with me. But yet, I'm sad for days and for hours. I'm making money. But I'm not happy. Stay with me. I'm excelling on my job, but I'm not happy. And my accomplishment does not seem to be enough to cover me from my will to have no will. All the things that God is doing for me is good. But sometimes I just feel like I have no will. I'm busy, but not satisfied. And oftentimes I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, did I say I'm a Christian and try my best to serve God? But I'm often just out of it, not functioning, and cannot understand that if I'm a Christian, why do I feel this way? They told me if I give my life to Jesus, things would change. I often feel overwhelmed with the pressures of life. But then I take notice of my life. I examine my life. And I cannot identify why I am feeling this way. Now, I'm preaching it, but I never experienced it, I don't believe. But I know God knows some of us have. And more than likely, I have experienced it. Because I did tell you I prayed to die, didn't I? Yeah, so apparently I have experienced it. But then I take notice, and I examine my life, and I cannot determine why I feel the way I feel. There are a lot of things in our lives that trigger emotions, but we need to know what to do when they happen. What do I do and? How can I overcome my state of despair and misery? Is there hope for me? And the answer is yes, there is. Psalm 73, 25th verse. Psalm 73 and the 25th verse. I'm going to read from the Amplified. The King James would be on the screen. Whom have I in heaven? David said, who do I have in heaven? But you, God. And besides you, I desire nothing on earth. <clears throat> my flesh and my heart may fail. And you've already experienced that. But God is the rock and the strength of my heart and my portion forever. That's the answer. God is my rock. God is my strength forever. When my heart failed me, when my flesh failed me, God is my portion. That's the answer, yo. That's the answer. My flesh and my heart fail it, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Remember that we have treasures in heaven. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. If you can put it on the monitor, maybe we're not getting them on the monitor today. All right. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, 
in Christ. Accepting Jesus as Lord of your life. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. But you got to want to do. You got to want the new, and you got to want the old to leave. Hallelujah. If this is true, then why do I, as a Christian, still struggle with many thoughts and feelings I did before I got saved? Am I the only one ever asked that question? I'm saved now. I'm a Christian. But I still got some thoughts and feelings from my old life. Uh -huh, I don't see but one hand. That's mine. Mm -hmm. Sir, I ain't going to look no more now. You can flag, wave all you want. It's too late. Hallelujah. My God. For years, for years, you learn to live your life. Separate from God. Some of you spent 20 years. I spent almost 35 or 40 years doing nothing but everything I did was separate from God. Now I got all of these things stored in my mind and in my heart. And there is no button to push to remove them or to delete them from my memory. That's why Paul said that your mind need to be transformed. Hallelujah. Your mind was so full of stuff that was separate from God. But now your mind, after you accept Jesus, your mind need to be changed, need to be transformed. And the way you get it transformed, you begin to trust God. You begin to hear this word and you begin to lean and stand on the word of God. Oftentimes, after having been in a good occasion, a good function with friends and family, a very exciting and pleasant weekend, you may have found yourself afterward drifting back into a state of feeling sad and empty. And there's no explanation for why you feel the way you do. Anybody ever done that? You were just happy everything was going good and then... When things settled down, you drifted back to somewhere, a dark place, and you don't know why you're in this dark place. Ain't nothing wrong, ain't nothing wrong, ain't nothing wrong. Why am I feeling my bills are paid, but still I'm... Oh, Jesus. My God. You must remember, in times like that, that God loved you and your family loved you. We have, we have uh, 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 found ourselves separated so much for family, we done forgot about the greatest support system that we have, family. When everybody walk away from you, God and family. You got to remember that God love you and your family love you. That will always help you. And read scriptures that gives you hope. Hallelujah. Got to have hope. But I'm tired all the time. And don't want to do anything. But you got to take control over your mind. Turn to Romans 12. You got to take control over your mind. Right up the X. Corinthians. Romans 12. I'm going to read from Amplified again. Well, I read both. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. I'm going to read Amplified. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourself, set apart as a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
you've heard the phrase, the phrase uh, a walking billboard. We should be a walking billboard for Christ. Just like that man recognized that Lois was a Christian, the people should recognize that you are a child of God. You should be a walking billboard for Christ. Holy, well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. It's the least you can do. And here's the key. Do not be conformed to this world. Don't allow what's going on in this world to dictate your lifestyle or your next move. Don't allow someone that's not saved, someone that's not a Christian, to determine what you're going to do tonight or tomorrow. I don't care how much you love them. Praise God. And do not be conformed to this world. Don't go along with the way things, the way that are said in the world. Don't accept the things in the world as true. Because the world have strayed so the world as we knew it have strayed so far from God teaching. And have accepted so much that the world said y'all should be doing. Until a church like this one gonna find, gonna have empty pews, empty chairs, because we tell the truth or we preach the truth. We got to do it. Have you ever been caught off guard because you didn't know the facts? You didn't have the facts. You don't want to do that. You want to know the truth. Be not conformed to this world any longer with its superficial official values and customs. But be transformed and progressively change, continuously changing as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitude so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Everything God planned, everything God teaches is for us. And when we accept it and act on it, it becomes a blessing to us. Hallelujah. But I'm tired. I don't want to do anything. Take control over your mind. The Bible says the battle is in the mind. If you can control your mind, hallelujah, if you can change your mind to the way God thinks, or to change your mind to believe in what God says, you will have a great increase in your life. And peace will just overflow you. Hallelujah. Don't feel like it. I don't want to. Why do I need to? You go. You represent me. You give an excuse for me. No. Take control over your mind and over your feelings and over your emotion. You may just have to go. You may just have to do something. Somebody can't always do it for you. Hallelujah. Are we making any sense this morning? I hate myself for the way I feel. Anybody ever said that? I would be okay if Jesus came back right now. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But is your work on earth completed? Have you completed the assignment God gave you? Have you accomplished everything God wanted you to accomplish? Well, if you haven't, then you need to get control of your emotion because you're not about to leave right now. <laughs> Current life, okay. You need to be in control so that you can complete your godly assignment. You only want to do those things that gives you pleasure. And you're not concerned with your mate or other's happiness. 
of what they want to do. I don't want to. Who is speaking to you? Is it God? Is it you? Or is it Satan? One of them is speaking to you. And all of them can't be right. Only one's right and only one's wrong. Well, I don't say about one wrong. Might be two wrong. But only one's right. All of us must do things that we don't want to do. And if you know you got to do them, just prep yourself. Ask God to get in your spirit and help you to face what you have to face. And sometimes it's nothing. Sometimes all you got to do is show up and sit down and smile. But you're so depressed because you got to do it. Hallelujah. We don't want to. We're not totally comfortable. But in the end, if we do go, how many times, when you finally went through, you was glad you did. Yeah, wasn't as bad as you thought it was going to be. Do you find yourself happy with doing nothing too often? Sleeping too much. Eating too much. And just don't have any energy. energy. I'm not saying that you're sick. But I'm saying that you need to check yourself. And see if you're obeying God. Or is there another force controlling you? Because you want to be in, you want to be, you want God to control your life and dictate what your next move should be. But if your mind and Satan are ruling you, then you, you're constantly doing things that don't bring gratification. Or it brings false gratification. It looks good, money in the bank, check writing, you can do all kind of stuff, but you're not happy. You talk to some folks and they'll tell you to have, you know, I, I always looked at people who, who got laid off from Dow or who quit. And I never saw those folks ha unhappy. They, matter of fact, they was more happier than I was. Well, that told me working at Dow Chemical wasn't everything. Folks were smiling, folks were happy, and nobody lost nothing. I said, wait a minute, that's life after this place. Hallelujah. So sometimes we think we just got to have something when you, really you don't have to have it. You just think you need it. So I'm not saying you're sick. Oh, are you, oh, you know, and I know you're a Christian. But who told you? That Satan had been told to leave you alone. That's not written anywhere. Yeah, just because you're a Christian, it's not written anywhere that Satan's going to leave you alone. No, he's not. And the more you confess Jesus, the more he's going to try to attack you. That's why you got to get control of your mind. Have your mind transformed. Begin to think different. You cannot allow yourself to even have your mind in in, in so many different places where you hear so much stuff. Because stuff attaches itself to you. Well, I got to go to this party and I know they're going to have alcohol. Well, you might want to make a decision. I may have to go. But how long I stay is up to me. I can't stay so long until what they're doing begin to confuse me and begin to have an effect on me. Hallelujah. You know, some of you say just the smell of smoke makes you sick. Well, why are you going to go around sick for folks smoking? You got to get away. If they're smoking, you got to leave. If drinking makes you sick, you got to get away from it. If you can't stand, if, if alcohol makes you tempted to drink alcohol, it's time for you to go. If you can't sit around Christian without cursing, your mind needs to be renewed. You may not be as saved as you thought you was. It just amazes me how, how Christians still curse. That ought to be one of the easy things we can let go. Choose not to say nasty things. I start cursing. I didn't curse in Vietnam. I didn't smoke in Vietnam. I start cursing and smoking when I left. I wanted to be cool. 
sound like I'm somebody, look like I'm somebody. I, I think back now how I used to make Lois and the kids suffer. We go into the football games and I'm making her fix my drink. I'm making her, uh, I'm smoking over all of them and all my kids had to endure that. None of them said anything. Cracked the window, that didn't do any good. But the things we do, where we think we're so smart, then other people think you're smart too. They think you got it going on. They don't know you ain't got that going on. Hey, but you probably thought I was so smart and had everything together. Uh, uh, I thought I did. Oh. Lord loved me so. She, she mixed a drink. And she hated it. Hated it. The things we cause other people to do. So, for a Christian, it is not written anywhere that Satan is going to walk away from you and leave you alone just because you got saved. Look at Roman 8, back up to Roman 8. The fifth verse. For those who are living according to the flesh, that's the world, Set their minds on things of the flesh, which gratify the body. Candy yam don't do nothing for me but gratify my body. <laughs> and y'all know I want them every Sunday. But those who are living according to the Spirit, set their minds on things of the Spirit, His will, and His Now the mind of the flesh is death, but now, both now and forever, because it pursues sin. But the mind of the spirit is life and peace, the spiritual well-being that comes from walking with God, both now and forever. The mind of the flesh, which is sinful pursuit, is actively hostile to God. It does not submit itself to God's law since it cannot. And those who are in the flesh live in a life that cares, that caters to sinful appetite and impulses cannot please God. Ninth verse says, however, you are not living in the flesh. You are not controlled by sinful nature, but you are controlled by the Spirit. If in fact the Spirit of God lives in you, directing and guiding you but if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ he does not belong to him and is not a child of God no matter what they call themselves I'll go even further enough to say that if they don't confess Jesus they probably are not a child of God because the word says no one goes to the father except he comes through the son so how can you love me and don't love my children? My God. We must know what spirit is leading us. We must know if we are operating in the flesh or in the spirit. You know, sometimes we, 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 we uh, you know, you hear something in your mind. And right away you say, that's God. Satan talks to you too. And you talk to you. So you got all those forces in there. And you got to have the spirit of discernment pray for it. So that you can discern what spirit is talking to you. And often you can discern it by, is it the will of God? Will it line up with the word of God? If it don't, it wasn't God. Because God gives us scripture to back up everything in our life. And you be saying, uh, we having such a hard time determine, determining if God is talking to us, Satan is, oh, he ain't got no hard time. It's the word. Yeah. 
Now the Bible says Satan is the angel of light. So what he'll do is what he did with Eve. He'll confuse the word. He'll misuse the word to get you to, to, to betray your God and yourself. Because when you do, you're betraying yourself. If you're becoming depressed, change the way you think. We got to allow the Spirit of God to lead us and not our mind. How many times you heard people, uh, I had a mind to do this and my mind is telling me this and, and in me, I'm, you better know it's the Spirit of God in you talking. If you look, just take a break, I want you to take a fast 30 second look over your life. Whoosh. You saw all the stuff you were so smart. That you were so right and you were so wrong. That quick. That quick. Every one of you saw it right quick. Boom. Wasn't as smart as I thought I would. I would have just allowed God to talk to me. Philippians 4. I know I don't usually use all these scriptures, but we use them today for different teaching. Philippians 4. Keep turning right. After Ephesians. Before Colossians. Philippians 4, 8 verse. The living, uh, King James say, finally, brethren. The Amplified say, finally, believers. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed confirm by God's word, Whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and bring peace, whatever is ad admirable and of a good repute, if there's any excellence, if there's any worthy of praise, think continually on these things, center your mind on them, implant them in your heart. Change the way you think. If the way you've been living your life have not produced a favorable output, change the way you do things. Give God a chance. Now, I know some of y'all join church and give them a chance for three months. And then you come once a month, twice a month, and then you expect God to move for you and, and you come to church on fourth Sunday and didn't come one, two, three Sundays and want to know well, that mess was all right, but it ain't get me well because you missed the first three I don't say it was a series but sometimes God builds you up sometimes God has, you know we hard headed so sometimes God got to feed us little stuff here and little stuff here and little stuff there so we can accept the big stuff and the big stuff is just simply saying yes Lord anybody remember when you was hard headed and you haven't overcome yet? <laughs> Hallelujah. But you got to give God a chance. We, the first thing we have to do is stop being so smart. Now, there's nothing wrong. God give you five senses. He give you education. He wants you to use that. But what good is knowledge without wisdom? What good is having knowledge and not have the wisdom to use the knowledge? You've got to have godly wisdom to be able to use the knowledge that you have. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ninth verse. The things which you have learned and received and heard and seen me, seen in me, practice these things in daily life, and the God who is the source of peace will bring will and well-being will be with you. You want peace in your life? Paul said, practice these things. Practice what you've seen me do. Practice this word. Everything Paul did was based on the word of God. And Paul himself did not follow God's word, right? Matter of fact, he wanted to kill it. He had an assignment to kill everybody that confessed Jesus. But when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, you may have met him on Scenic Highway. Wherever you met Jesus, Paul met him on, on the road to Damascus, and it changed his life. And from that moment on, he began to talk different. He began to live different. He began to try hard. That's what we got to do. Once you meet Jesus 
and decide that this is the way to go for my life and for my family. It's not just you. Your action determines what's going to happen with your family. Hallelujah. And then you begin to apply those principles to your life. And when you didn't have peace. Anybody remember when peace came to your life? My God, Jesus. Things were so messed up. And then one day there was peace. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know when, but it came. Hallelujah. That's Jesus working in your life. Praise God. Start thinking on the word of God rather than on things that depress you. We read that early in Philippians. Start, we just read it. Start thinking on things that are wholesome. Some of you have already started to get depressed because of something you got to do in July. I ain't going to actually raise your hand, but you probably could. You got to do something in July. Maybe it's May for you. Maybe it's April. Maybe, maybe April just about gone. Maybe it's Christmas, July. Maybe it's Christmas. You already got depressed over something that you got to do two or three months from now. Why? Change the way you think. Choose to be happy. Trust God. And then you want to rock and walk around quoting scripture. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Yeah. Then you put tones behind it. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. My God. And before you can move. Not even time. To even consider what's coming up in August. You're already depressed. I don't want to. <laughs> Woo! Somebody say amen. It helped my pastor. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. I don't want to. But do you need to? See yourself as maybe there's something God want to do through you. Maybe somebody else needs to see how you carry yourself. Being in a place you don't want to be in. Or being in not a place, an event that you don't want to be in. Maybe God want to use you. You don't want to go, but it's necessary that you go. Don't start getting depressed before it happens. Didn't the scripture say, why should you worry and you can't change anything? Didn't it say, why should you worry about tomorrow and tomorrow going to take care of itself? But you ain't worried about tomorrow, you worried about July. Amen, Morris. Hallelujah. Okay. Matthew 14. You're getting ready to close. No, I've been a little longer than I have, but it's all right. Anybody being blessed? Hallelujah. Matthew, the 14th chapter. And I can't read all this. I'm going to add live most of it. But I'll read some of it to tell you what was going on to trigger your mind. Just like, just like there are things that you experience that trigger a bad feeling, a state of depression, a state of don't want to, the word of God would trigger you also to take courage, to have strength, to know that you're not alone. What's the title of the message? You're not the only one. You're not the one, only one. You're not alone. 14 chapter 15 verse. When evening came, the disciples came to him and said, This is an isolated place. Let me read that in King James. Uh, and when it was evening, the disciples came to him saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the village and buy themselves victuals, food. Because they had been there all day preaching. But Jesus said unto them, to his disciples, They need not depart. Give you them something to eat. 
And they said unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fish. Now I always wonder, you know, some of us don't ask questions of the Bible. I always wonder. The Bible, some, one translator said a little boy had, had some fish and bread. Well, he took that boy food. His mama was the only one that sent him with some food to the camp meeting. They don't say they, they, they didn't say it was the issue of getting it, but they got it. But that ain't what I'm trying to get. He said, bring them to me. Bring the fish and loaves to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and he fed and the two fish and looking unto heaven, he blessed and break. How many of you still breath bless your food? Blessed and break and gave the loaves to the disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat. They were filled and they took up all the fragments and remained twelve basket full. Now I need to read that from the uh, 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 Amplified. And all they all and they all ate and were satisfied. They picked up twelve full basket of the leftover broken pieces. So this wasn't necessarily food that they should eat. This was this was more than likely the scraps that were left over. And straight away the Jesus constrained his disciple, 22nd verse, to get into the ship and to go before him unto the other side. Well, he sent the multitude away. Well, what happened to the 12 basket of scrap they picked up? He told them to pick it up. It was for a reason. But the Bible don't tell us what the reason was for. If Jesus told them to pick up the 12 basket, and then he tell them to get on the ship. Do you think they sit, sit the 12 basket down, then got on the ship? He didn't tell them to sit it down. So more than likely, they took the 12 basket of scraps on the ship with them. If you can believe it. All right. All right. Uh, 23rd. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart or alone and to pray and when he when evening was come he was there alone all right i got a new bible and the pages are thin it takes a while to turn but the ship was now in the midst of the sea tossed with waves and for the wind was contrary and very boastful now the disciples out in the boat and jesus up on the mountain praying and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spoke unto them, Be of good charity as I, be not afraid. And Peter answered and said unto him, Lord, if it be thou, let me, that ain't what I want to get to. But what I want to talk about is this. The ship, they find themselves in a ship where the storm have gotten real bad and Jesus is not with them. And they are afraid and worried. But Jesus come and Jesus calm the storm. So I believe that he had them to put those 12 baskets of food scrap on the boat to remind them if I fed 5,000 if I fed 5,000, I can calm this storm. If you look back on what I've done already, I can do whatever you need me to do now. I believe he wanted them to be reminded. So I ask you, what is it in your life that God have done for you before that the next time you get in trouble, you'll look back in your boat, look back over your life, and see that he done it once. He'll do it again. All God was trying to do is get Jesus was trying to do is get him to trust him. That's all God want to do is telling you you're not the only one. You're not the only one been through something, but you got to trust God. You got to look back on where you come from. If God brought me from that dark place to light, he can help me again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the God we serve. God knows what you're dealing with, and he want to help. You're not the only one. 
you're not the only one. But you must rebuke the wind, rebuke impossible situation, and trust God. Didn't say they wouldn't come. Before you become successful, you got to go through something. You got to learn the trade. You got to learn the process that the Lord was talking about before you can become successful. But after you become successful and trouble comes, you better be able to look back on where you come from and know who brought you. If you brought me through this, you'll get me through that. Hallelujah. You got to learn to trust in God. Hallelujah. Church family, I pray you were blessed and inspired by this wonderful message. If you would like to know more about Pastor Cross Richard Sr. and New Creation Christian Center, visit their website and follow them on social media to keep up with more great sermons, praise, and worship, and all of their activities. I'm Renee Johnson, and I want to thank you for watching the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me.